I'm going to ask Leah to come right now. Leah's a young lady in our church, and uh, some time ago she started to share with me, because what I try to do is to connect with, with people in the church from time to time and have conversations when I get the chance to see them. And Leah started to tell me about uh, how the Lord's been helping her and in her studies and in her job. And I said, that'd be lovely. Can you share it with the, the ladies, a bit of your journey? So I'm going to ask Leah to come and just share um, what she's doing and how knowing the Lord Jesus Christ has made a difference. Bless you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to share um, about what God has been doing in my life uh, f- from COVID-19. Uh, um, he's taken me on a journey, and he's been sh- he's shown me so much grace and so much love, and he's shown me what it means to really trust him. Um, so in 2021 was uh, the last year of my degree. So I was studying psychology, and that was kind of when COVID really hit um, properly. And I think I really struggled throughout that year. I started to think about, you know, the future and like what would happen because studying psychology would, um, you know, affect, like what was going on was affecting um, the career field that I was going into. And I made it through university. Um, I graduated in 2021. And then um, I worked as a support worker um, from 2021 to uh, last year, early last year. And throughout that time, working as a support worker was, I think my faith was really tested and what I believed in was really tested because um, um, as I was working, I think it got to a point where they started to say that I couldn't work there anymore if I didn't take the vaccine. So um, I knew that I didn't want to take the vaccine and I was, it's just something that, you know, I just personally didn't want to do. And then I think uh, towards towards maybe like April or maybe a little bit earlier, um, God said to, uh, God said to me, um, you know, I know the plans that I have for you. Um, they're plans of, you know, hope and for a future. And that verse from Jeremiah 29, 11 really like kept me throughout that time. And it got to the point where um, I was, uh, my manager, like every time he saw me, he was like, have you taken the vaccine? Um, you need to take it. So he started to apply a lot of pressure to me and um, then I remember that I just made the decision like I was I tried to avoid him every time I saw him because I was just like oh my gosh I know who he's gonna ask so I was just like you know trying to avoid him at all costs and then finally it came down to it it was like okay if you haven't taken it by this date that means regardless you won't be able to work here anyways so then I just came at peace with that decision I was like Do you know what it's okay um, in despite of all that I was still worried because I was like it's not just this one job it's about the rest of my future and the rest of my career as well because everyone was asking for a vaccine it wasn't just my workplace and when I was looking at different jobs I would be like scrolling down. I was like, oh, like this job is good. Like I'm going to apply. And then I'll get down to the bottom and I'll see like two stars. Oh, you must be vaccinated for COVID-19 before um, you could apply. So like I was really losing hope um, in like what I was trying to do. But um, I remember when I, I got the letter from my manager saying that, um, you know, we're going to have a meeting and, and now uh, we, you basically won't be able to work here. So I was just like, okay, um, that's fine. Um, And then I remember the week after that uh, was when they reversed the rules. So there was like, you no longer need um, to have the COVID vaccine um, anymore. And I just thank God that I trusted him and trusted that plan um, because I know right after that, it was like, you know, it's time now to move on because I was like looking back and like they really tried to pressure me to do something that I didn't want to do. So it was time to move on. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that I listened because God had better plans for me. And I was I'm so excited um, for where he's taken me. So a few months after that, in May, I got um, 
a new job as a mental health practitioner and I'm working with um, adults with severe mental health. Um, it's something that I'm really passionate about and that God has really put on my heart to help people um, that is struggling with mental health. Um, so that has been great, um, working with those people, hearing their stories um, and being there for them and allowing God to use me in my workplace and outside of my workplace as well. And I, you know, he's shown me so much grace to, to get to, to where I'm at. And not only did he allow me to have a workplace where the people was better and was supportive of me, um, he also allowed the, the course that I'm, I'm on, um, the job that I have, they've paid for my master's to complete it for the whole year. And... And I'm so thankful that, um, you know, that, that has happened because it's exactly what I was looking for. And, um, and I just want to give God all the thanks and all the praise. And then I just um, have some prayer points that I would like to... I would like to, um, for us to pray about, because the things that I've seen um, in my work environment, the people that I've worked with has changed um, my life um, a lot. It's opened up my eyes to um, so much different things um, and so much things that people are going through that no one may know what you know anyone is going through. And mental health is such, there's been such an increase in mental health ever since COVID as well. And I mean, when I'm in like my service, the like waiting list for psychology is over like two years long. So people have to wait such a long time to actually get the help that they need. But I know that through Jesus, you know, they have all the help that they need. And I just um, hope that, you know, everyone um, in this room and as women, we spread the, use the light that God has given us and the Holy Spirit to, um, to share the words to, to these people and, you know, help them to uh, come back to Christ and get to know Jesus Christ for themselves and, you know, have him work through their lives. Like, I know that he's worked through my life so much um, through all my mistakes and he showed me so much grace and everything. Um, so I just want to um, share these uh, points. Um, so I just want us to pray for those who have, um, are struggling with mental health and especially anxiety and depression. And what I've seen is a lot of anxiety and depression along with a lot of a severe um, illnesses. But the people, um, there's hopelessness um, around. Um, they have like no hope. Um, their identity, they feel like they're just subjective to this mental health, um, you know, and the people only look at them through like the diagnosis that they have. And they, you know, are struggling to kind of like move past that. And I really want to pray about trauma because trauma is one thing that um, from, as Reverend Taylor was saying, from young age, like people are really struggling to kind of get over that um, stigma that has been put over their life. The things that they've been through um, have really had an effect on their mental health and they've grown um, older into adulthood and they can't get past certain things that's happened to them. Um, and I'll just lastly want us to pray for um, those who are having suicidal thoughts and those who want to commit suicide um, because there's just a lot of times I uh, speak to people, um, you know, there's so much suicidal thoughts, so much self-harm and things. So I just really want to bring these points to pray over uh, because I believe that God has a plan and a purpose for all of their lives and anyone as well in this room that is struggling with mental health, um, God has a plan and purpose for all your lives. So I just want us to stand and pray with me to, um, for these points that I've just said. Father, I thank you so much for your word, Lord. I thank you for your people that you've placed on this earth even those who are suffering with their mental health, Lord Jesus, and those who are suffering with anxiety and depression, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you'll meet them right where they are, Lord. I pray over those that are feeling hopeless or feeling like there's nothing else in this world that is left for them, Lord Jesus, that they may be going and looking at different things. They may be going and using drugs and alcohol, Lord Jesus, but I pray right now that your spirit 
Lord, will come and you, it will dwell in them, Lord, your Holy Spirit. I pray against suicide, Lord, suicidal thoughts. I break the lies of the enemy, oh Father God, that is coming to steal and kill and destroy these lives of these people, Lord Jesus. I pray right now, Lord, that you will you would look out for them, oh Father God. You will visit them right where they are, oh Father God, whether they're at their homes or they're in the hospital room, Lord Jesus. I pray that your Holy Spirit will come down on them, Lord Jesus, and you will bless them and you will touch them and you will help them to know that life is worth living, Lord. Life with you is always worth living. I pray, oh Father God, for your goodness and your grace. I thank you for showing them grace. I thank you for showing them mercy, oh Father God. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you will allow them to know that they have a hope in you, oh Father God. Their identity is within you, oh Father God. You knew them and you formed them from before they were in their mother's womb, oh Lord Jesus. So they are worth more, oh Father God. I thank you for the lives. I thank you for each and every one of their lives. And I thank you for anyone today that is going through um, any mental health problems, oh Father God. I pray that you will lift them up. I pray that you will visit them, oh Father God. Help them not to feel alone, but to let them know, oh Father God, that there is people out there that are willing to help them, oh Father God. I pray that they'll, you will let them know that you are there for them, oh Father God. They might have lost their way, but there is always a way back. Help them to know that it's never too late. And through you, all things are possible, Lord Jesus. You died on the cross for our sins, oh Father God. And no matter what the pe anyone wants to tell them about themselves and about their mental health and about what they are struggling with, you are overcome, oh Lord Jesus. You are bigger than any mental health problems, Lord Jesus. You are bigger than it all, Lord. And I just thank you. And I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And I thank you for each and every one of their lives. And anyone in this room that may be struggling, oh Father God, give them the strength and give them the hope and show them grace. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. That was so beautiful. Thank you, Aaliyah, for sharing. Now I'm going to ask Naomi to come and to share. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Bless you, Naomi. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Not usually one to talk. I'm usually singing or something, but here we go today. Um, so Reverend Taylor asked me to just share a bit of my testimony um, and while that will be in there I feel like I just wanted to share a word that I've been hearing from God for the last probably year and you've been saying it for about three weeks you said it non-stop in church um, and to paraphrase it was um, hell's not scared of a Sunday faith um, if it only leads to empty praise and those are lyrics of a bridge of the song that I'm going to sing um, and I feel like for me I am um, I love musical theatre and last year I did a foundation at a drama school which is the university level of education but for theatre um, and in that environment you're just surrounded with so much ungodliness if that makes sense um, but oh I'm shaking wow um, I know that the, when I applied um, I didn't think I would get in um, and I applied for a foundation. I knew I couldn't afford it. And then in my interview, um, the head of year for the first time said, um, how would you fund it? And I said, I have not got a clue. Um, and he was like, we would like to offer you a place. We'll let you know in a few days. And then right at the end, he said, oh, just to let you know, for the first time in our university's history, we're offering four fully funded places. Um, and I was able to get one of those. So last year... <laughs> Um, so last year I was there in Guildford for a year, um, fully paid for, um, and it was such an awesome experience. And for the first probably like four, three, four months, it was amazing. My my journey with God was strong. It was, it, I loved every moment of it. I couldn't wait to go and read my Bible. I loved spending time in his word. I loved worshipping. I loved praying. And then I missed one day. I was reading my Bible every single day. I missed one day. And then the next day, I had no desire to do it. And that went on for like two weeks. I did not pick up my Bible once. There was just no desire whatsoever. And then I was like, this isn't right. So I picked it up and I carried on. 
but it just became a chore and religious. And it was a, oh, I haven't read my Bible, need to read it. Otherwise, everything's going to go wrong. But it meant nothing to me. And then one day I asked God, I was like, God, I want you to show me your hair. Like, let me feel a, a tangible, like, hug, like a warmth from you. Um, and I didn't. And that carried on for about a week. And then I was at church one day um, before service, and I was like, God, please just show me that you're here. And during praise and worship, I felt nothing. I felt an emptiness. And I started crying, and I was like, God, where are you? And then all of a sudden, I didn't feel like a hug or a warmth, but I felt someone was there, if that makes sense. And then I realized that he was always there, but just because he didn't show me himself in the way that I wanted him to didn't mean that he wasn't, he wasn't there. He removed himself for about five minutes, and I felt the dead emptiness. Then when he came back, I was like, oh, yeah. that, that was you. Um, and then I was like, right, we're going to sort, sort out my life. Um, so I got back into it, and it was the most amazing thing, and I've carried that on since. But those words, hell's not scared of a Sunday faith, has always stayed with me. You can't just come to church on a Sunday and, and just praise, worship, be like, yes, I'm all for Jesus, and then on Monday, forget about it. So the title of the song that I'm singing is called Monday Morning Faith, um, and I feel like it's so important that that faith that we have on a Sunday needs to carry on when you wake up on the Monday and throughout the week. Um, and this song is by a group of, it's from a university in America, the SEU Worship, and it's a like a worship team from the university, so they're youth, they're young people like me. And I feel like that is so important to see people like me worshipping and understanding the fact that they cannot just come on a Sunday and say, yes, Jesus, I love you, but then ignore it for the rest of the week. And the, in the environment that I was in, it's so important for me to carry on through the week. Otherwise, nothing's going to go right and everything will just go downhill and I will, I will regret it. Um, so yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Just my mother's faith Cause that's not enough To get through the rough Oh, I need a Monday morning faith I want to hear you in more than just one way Show your voice in all of the mundane things You're in the in-between you're in my everything And that's all I really need My soul sings in the morning I love the King and He loves me And all that I'm compelled to bring Is my everyday offering Oh, and let my worship be more than just singing When did music become a religious thing? These songs be what they're meant to be The sound of your church awakening and help my heart to keep up with the heavens Where the angels sing 24-7 praise More than enough to get through my rough You're teaching me Monday morning faith And that's all I really need My soul sings in the morning I love the King and He loves me And all that I'm compelled to bring It's 
my everyday offering Your mercy's new every morning I come alive as you're calling And know that I'm compelled to bring It's my everyday offering And hell's not scared of a Sunday faith If it only leads to empty praise And what really makes darkness run Is when the saints arise And praising quiet on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday To know you, to love you, to choose you first on Thursday and Friday and Saturday To see you, behold you in worship singing Hallelujah, holy, holy Glory to the King of kings and Hallelujah, holy, holy All honor and glory belongs to And he loves me And know that I'm compelled to bring It's my everyday offering Your mercy's new every morning I come alive as you're calling And know that I'm compelled to bring my everyday offering That's what God wants us to, to know him. That's what this weekend is all about. Moving from being religious to having a personal relationship with Jesus. Having his kingdom on the inside and Jesus is the kingdom. Thank you so much, Naomi. That was beautiful. God bless you. Praise God. I'm going to have a, another lady just come and share her testimony. I said to her, she, she's with us for the weekend. Nelly, um, I can't, I can't pronounce your surname, so I won't attempt. You can, but Nelly's, Nelly's from uh, Crete. I think it's maybe a year ago that she came here with her husband and children to prayer meeting. That's when we first met her, and um, we're so delighted that she's come and she's with um, our sister Diana Curtis. They drove all the way down from Northampton. Had some adventures last night with all the traffic, but they made it. And we're so glad to have them. And Diana's going to share her testimony tonight with us. But we're so glad for these two ladies and coming here. And asked Nelly if she would share this morning. Because we're just flows the Holy Spirit leads. So I have to just tell ladies, you know, um, I may call you, I may not call you, but, you know, the Spirit leads. Because we want to be in the flow of the Holy Spirit. And I just feel now that Nelly would come and just share her testimony or part of it, whatever the Lord leads her. So to welcome Nelly from Crete. Bless you. I just thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for your love. I was thinking what to share, and the Lord just led me to share my story, how I believed. As I was encouraged by the girl, forget her name, she just shared now, and it reminded me, myself, I grew up in a family 
My father is Muslim background and my mom is Orthodox Christian. So I believe that God is there, but I never read the Bible or, you know, we went to the Orthodox church and you do what your mom do. So you light the candle and you kiss the icon. But it wasn't like personal relationship with God. It wasn't here. So I was 17 when I moved to another country to study. I was 18 when I was a university student. And you know, you live your life as everybody does. And you don't know God or you just move on. And um, I think I was third year student. I was around 20. So there's a story, but anyway, I was around 25 and um, I had a broken relationship and my parents was far away. So I asked, start asking myself why the things are happening and why I feel alone. And I felt such a loneliness in my heart because, you know, my parents are far away. I had a broken relationship and I was asking, God, do you exist? Where are you? And um, one of my colleagues, um, he kind of was ahead of me, my ex-colleague. He graduated and he was somewhere where I wanted to be. And um, so I asked him, could you, um, and I, I end up at the place where um, I was working, the work finished, the season, because I was working in a hotel as an administrative assistant, you know, on like summertime you work to get some pocket money and help yourself. So yeah, the, my, my work finished and I was at the edge like, what do I do next? And so I asked him, I'm, I'm searching for apartment and uh, girls with whom I could share, you know, uh, expenses. And he said, yeah, I know some girls that are Christians. And I'm like, I'm Christian too. I, you know, I'm Orthodox Christian. And he said, but they read Bible. I'm like, no trouble, you know. I'm not reading, but I'm Christian. What's the difference? So he said, do you believe in God? I said, yeah, I do believe in God. You know, I believe he exists. He said, did you ever read Bible? I said, no, maybe one day I will. So I was 25, right? And he believed, he said to me at the end of our meeting, I said, um, I actually was desperate to find somebody to share apartment with. And he, I said, if you know somebody of the girls, because I was sure I want to live with the girls, he said, would you give me the telephone number? And he said, but do you believe in Jesus? I'm like, I don't know. I believe in God. And he goes, do you believe that Jesus loves you? And it's like, God is love. And he loves you so much that he gave his own son for you. And I'm like, uh, okay, thank you. I'll think about it, you know. <laughs> so that's how we left. I left him my number and I said, please, if you know the girls, call me back. But God started working in my heart at that moment because... My mom always said, go to a church, light the candle, go to this Holy Nicholas, you know, the miracle maker, and just pray and he will, you know, he will do what you ask for. So when I did so, nothing happened, you know, he didn't answer my prayer. And I was really like walking around outside and watching the sky and asking God, do you exist? Do you really love me? I want to feel your love. I don't want to words or anything. I was empty inside and I just asked, if you really exist, I want to feel it. And so nobody heard my prayer. It was just me and God, you know. And that day the guy called me and he said, there is two, there's three girls that are searching for flatmates and they're Christians. And I'm like, okay, just give me a number, you know. And meanwhile, I was traveling to that town where, you know, it's a capital town. Everybody wants to capital like London, you know, it's more jobs, opportunities. So I'm traveling and I'm like, God, help me to find a place so I don't sleep on the street, you know, today. So, um, and um, yeah, I, I call to other options, you know, when you take a newspaper, you call to rent a flat or something. There was nothing going through. So by lunchtime, I had this 
appointment with the girls and there was nice Christian girls and they was asking me, where do you sleep tonight? I'm like, I have no idea. And they said, okay, we have few rules here, you know. The men's are not allowed in this house. And I'm like, mm, no man, no problem. We broke up, so any, no problem. And then I said, we are Christians. And I'm like, I Christ I'm Christian too. And they say, do you smoke? I said, yes, I do. They said, we don't smoke here. I'm like, no problem, you have a balcony, you know. And then they was like, okay, how about you just come tonight and, you know, we have dinner together. So they, literally, I, I just loved, you know, I came, I picked up my suitcases, was on hold in a bus station, you know, I brought, and here I am, I just had my clothes, you know, um, I didn't bring all my stuff, you know, it was with my aunt where I stayed before, but they just made the bedding, you know, they made the beautiful dinner, and they just, I felt like I was a part of their family. They welcomed me, they wanted me to share my story, what happened, wh who I am, and so on. So I just felt God's love, you know, through them serving me, and I was like, I felt like I'm sleeping, I said, they don't know me. Why is they so good to me, you know? I said, is it a dream I'm going through? What happens to me? So I felt that God love, you know? I felt God answer my prayers through just them, not knowing me, but being so good to me, you know, just loving on me. And, you know, they didn't have any hope for me or anything. So one of the girls, she said, you have so much time now. I, I was searching for jobs, so next step was like, okay, you found an apartment, now you search for a job. And she said, don't worry, we'll pray for you, you know. God will give you the best job he has for you. Every time I would share something, they would say, let's pray. God will help you, you know, God will help you. And I'm like, okay. And then one of the girls, she said, if you're interested, would you like to read the Bible? And I was like, oh, okay, I have more time now. So I start reading Bible, and it was so good because I felt like it was like he tells me that he loves me, you know, and that he didn't want me to, you know, pain. So every time I was growing up, my mom said, don't have a relationship with a man before you get married. I'm like, mom, you're old-fashioned, <laughs> you know. That's not in style, but actually God said through his Bible that he didn't want to break my heart. And that's why he cares for me. So, long story short, in three months, I, got, I decided that I will be baptized. I want to be with Jesus. I want to choose him to be my friend, and I want to walk with him. And the promise I took as my banner, and he will be with me all the time, and he will never leave me, nor forsake me. Because I've been betrayed so many times by people. I couldn't trust people. But here we go. I have my friend until. Yeah, so just thank you. Oh, thank you for sharing, Nelly. See, we're unique individuals and the Lord meets us in that unique way. He knows us and he knows how to, to communicate his love to us. And each story has been different because we're each different people. And God meets us. That's the lovely thing about the Lord. He meets us right where we're at. Amen. 